Display technology has been getting better and cheaper in the last couple of years. And with that, high quality screens have been entering the budget market. Well, this monitor is no exception. Yo guys, this is Luke, and this is my review of the BenQ EW 2780. If you've been in the market for a new display, then you probably have certain specifications that you're looking for. So let me say this right now. If you're looking for a super color accurate monitor with a high refresh rate, then this one probably isn't for you. But if you're looking for a $200 1080p display that looks good and has some pretty solid features, then this one might actually be for you. Now the BenQ EW2780, that's a really long name, is a 1080p 27 inch display with a native refresh rate of 75 Hertz. This means it's not going to be terrible for gaming. And speaking of gaming, I've been streaming on Twitch Monday and Wednesday nights. Feel free to give a follow. Now the display also ships with HDR10 and BenQ's new display technology that you're calling HDRI, and we'll talk about this a little bit more later. Now the panel is an IPS panel, which means viewing angles and blacks are going to be great on this display. And this monitor's response time is a respectable five milliseconds. Now all of this sounds great on paper, but in real life, it definitely varies a bit more. In order to see this, let's talk about the color. So yes, like I said, this monitor isn't very color accurate. So if you're a content creator or a graphic designer, then this one probably isn't it. However, that said, the color reproduction of this display is pretty nice. Right out of the box, the factory calibration gave the following scores. Now, BenQ claims that the monitor can hit 72% of the NTSC range, but even after the calibration from my Spider-X, I was only able to get around 70% coverage. Although that 2% really isn't going to be that noticeable. So as you can see, it's not really a color accurate display. Although if this isn't an issue for you, then the colors reproduced to my eye seem bright and punchy. In fact, that was actually the first thing I noticed about this display. Also, because it's an IPS panel, the blacks are actually really deep in this monitor. In fact, for my liking, they were a little bit too black, but that was easily fixed with a gamma adjustment. Also, since it's an IPS panel, you're going to notice a little bit of ghosting on a completely dark screen, but the monitor does a pretty good job of handling it, and I didn't really notice it in any other scenario. Now, the next thing that you're probably wondering about is the HDR10. And while it does have HDR, it's not amazing. I ran display test HDR, and it seems that the EW2780 falls below the HDR400 range, which means in HDR mode, it can only reach about 200 nits of peak brightness. Unfortunately, this really isn't usable for HDR. In order to see the true benefits of high dynamic range, you would need something that is HDR600 certified or above, which means that the HDR in this monitor is unfortunately less than stellar. However, on the monitor, there are several different HDR modes. Cinema HDRI and Normal HDR. HDRI is BenQ's new technology that essentially uses an ambient sensor below the monitor to detect ambient lighting in one's environment and adjust the brightness and contrast accordingly. And while it's clear that this definitely works, unfortunately it's hard to see the benefits of it with a 200 nit monitor. That said, the HDRI simulation when in SDR mode is actually pretty good. In fact, I actually preferred the HDR simulation in SDR over the normal HDR. <laughs> Say that five times fast. So what does that all mean? Basically the HDR on this monitor while there and working is just simply not bright enough to see the full benefits of it. However, BenQ has informed me that they have various different monitors in the EW line with some with higher brightness levels, resolutions, and prices. Moving on over to sound, yes, I said sound, this monitor has two pretty solid speakers on the back. Now, yes, obviously monitor speakers are not going to be that amazing but for what it's worth, they are not too bad. They get pretty decently loud without distortion, and they have several different modes, including cinema, pop and live, and dialogue and vocal. Now, for the most part, I kept it on pop and live as I felt that gave the best bass response while still keeping the highs decently clean. Now, with like most monitors, it's going to have some included color presets. And while most of them are nothing to write home about, one of the ones that's pretty cool is eye care. Now we've seen the same technology in Apple's True Tone displays, and while maybe it's not as polished here, it actually works really well. 
The ambient sensor below the monitor detects changes in color temperature and tunes the display accordingly. I personally really like to use this as night as I suffer from headaches from blue light and I find it's a lot easier to look at the display in this mode. Now they also have an e-paper mode which is basically a grayscale mode but I actually quite like it for reading. So in terms of aesthetics and design, this monitor is actually quite beautiful. I personally really like the thin bezel-less design and the stand that it has is actually quite nice as well. Now one thing to note, if you're going to be using the stock stand, the plastic back of it does feel a little cheap, but that's nothing to worry about. Now over on the back, there are a couple HDMI ports and a line in for your headphones. Lastly, let's talk about gaming. So obviously this display isn't a very high refresh rate. That said, it does come with AMD's FreeSync, and at 75Hz, gaming is a pretty pleasant experience. Because of AMD FreeSync, there is no screen tearing, and at 5 milliseconds, you're not going to notice any input or display lag. So who is this monitor for? Well, as you can probably tell, it's going to be for the average Joe. Is it amazing? Well, no. Is it terrible? No again. I'd say it's about average, but at the price point of $179, it's actually kind of hard to pass up. It's got some great features that punch well above its weight, and its slim design and small footprint make it a really decent display for anyone looking for a budget-friendly monitor. If you make sure to keep your expectations in check, then you'll find that this display can handle a lot. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this one. Big thanks to BenQ for sending this out for review. If you want to see more similar content like this one, make sure to let me know down below. If you like this video, you know what to do, and if you didn't, well, hit that dislike button three times. Anyways, that's going to wrap it up for this video, and until next time, peace!